What's going on everyone? Andrew here, and today I want to talk about using compressor pedals on guitar. You might be looking around and seeing them in a lot of studios or on a lot of guitarists' pedal boards and thinking, why are they using one? Do I need one? And how do I make sure that I'm using it the right way? They can be a bit intimidating as the controls are usually different from that of an overdrive or distortion pedal, but they're also incredibly interactive with each other and achieving the best sound. I'm gonna break down what compressors do, how they're controlled, and several different ways that compressors can be used on guitar. We're gonna compare the audio quality of the digital compressors that are on the Line 6 HX Stomp to some analog compression of my vintage MXR Dynacomp and also my Carl Martin compressor limiter. We're gonna to listen to the differences as well as review the parameters available to adjust the effect. Welcome to my channel where my focus is music education for the modern guitarist. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please consider subscribing. A compressor can be defined as a device that allows you to actively modify the dynamics of a sound source. Now with guitar, manually controlling your dynamic range or being able to strum super light and then super hard is one of the most crucial aspects of the instrument. But there are moments where you may want to have fixed control over that dynamic range or automatically limit the variances in volume coming out of the instrument. A compressor can do this for you, but it will only function the way you want it to if you know how to set it up right. Let's check it out. The threshold control sets the decibel level at which the compressor starts to take effect. This is probably the most important control. Signals that are louder than the threshold level will be affected by the compression, and any signals quieter than the threshold level will not be affected. That means depending on how you set the threshold level and then how hard or soft you play the guitar, some of the notes will cross the threshold and be compressed, and some of them will not cross it and just be as normal. The compression ratio sets the ratio of dynamic reduction in relation to the input signal. And again, this only applies to signals that cross that threshold level. Higher compression ratios will reduce the sound more drastically, while lower compression ratios will be a more subtle reduction. There are ways to use both subtle and extreme compression ratios and settings, and we'll go over examples of both. Additional controls are often found like attack, release, and response, and these controls have to do with how the compressor reacts to your signal. Attack is measured in milliseconds and adjusts how quickly any signals that cross over the threshold are compressed. Release is also measured in milliseconds and adjusts how quickly the compressor lets go of the signal once it drops back down below the threshold. Shorter attack and release time settings and the compressor will react abruptly to any signals that cross the threshold, while longer release times will have more of like a smoother effect because the compressor is a little more slow to take hold. Most compressors will also have a volume or gain control. This is typically used to match the volume of the bypass and affected signal because there's some volume loss and some volume change when you compress. Volume controls can also be used to boost the overall level of the compressor so that you can get not only compression, but also an overall signal boost when you engage the effect. Lastly, some compressors will have a blend or a mix knob that will blend back in the unaffected signal so that you have what's called parallel compression, where you have your dry signal and also some of the compressed signal, and you can blend these in. A compressor pedal that's blended with some of that original unaffected signal is called parallel compression, where a compressor that's just 100% on your signal would be called linear compression. The HX Stomp's internal controls have controls for nearly every parameter you would want, including mix on every single algorithm, where my Carl Martin pedal has a couple more controls, but no mix control. And you'll see the Dynacomp just has one control that controls all of the compression parameters and then a simple volume knob. On many Stompbox compressor pedals, due to design technique and also size constraints, 
you'll see attack, release, and threshold emitted as knobs, and these are usually set as fixed values inside the pedal. Based on available controls, you'll see some compressors are more versatile than others. This, combined with the audio quality, are two important things to consider while you're shopping for compressor pedals. Hopefully after this video, you'll be able to determine what you're looking for and purchase accordingly. Now that all that's out of the way, let's jump right into some practical applications and see how the analog pedals compare to the HX stop. There are times where you'll want your guitar volume capped at a certain level and alleviate the need to actively manage it with your strumming hand. This case where you're capping your signal off is referred to as limiting. It's essentially capping off your signal to ensure that your output level will never exceed a certain point. Let's pull up the LA Studio Comp on the Helix and the Carl Martin Compressor, and we're gonna set both of these up as limiters. Set the threshold to your desired maximum level. This is the ceiling, and any notes that go above this setting will be pulled back down and output at that setting. Set the compression ratio high so that any signal that crosses the threshold will be completely pulled down. Set your attack and release settings short so that those signals that cross the threshold are quick brought down and completely brought down. The best part about true limiting is you still have all the dynamics of any signal level that's underneath the threshold. Everything underneath the threshold will be left alone and everything that crosses the threshold will be pulled down to the threshold level. This can be added to an already recorded track to remove any spikes that came through, but it can also be used while recording to take the stress off of having to worry about that the whole time with your right hand. Knowing that the limiter is giving you that cushion in the upper dynamic range, you can feel more free to play without the stress of having to worry about that. Next up, let's look at a more traditional fattening compression with a lower threshold that's gonna take some of the softer notes and bring them up while simultaneously taking some of those peaks and bringing them down, controlling the full dynamic range of the instrument. This is gonna give you a very level, even guitar volume, regardless of the dynamic variations you're sending from the instrument. Let's pull up the Kinky Comp on the HX Stomp and also the Carl Martin Compressor. Set the threshold a little lower and increase the attack and release time so the compressor is a little softer about how it compresses the signal. We're gonna set the compression ratio a little lower than where we had it on the limiter as well. We only wanna slightly pull up the lower signals and slightly pull down the upper signals, basically creating like a dynamic range that we're going to sit in. <laughs> Blending in a little of the dry signal can reduce the intensity of the effect to your liking. With the Carl Martin, it's all or nothing for this kind of application, but that isn't necessarily the worst thing. Bringing the compression knob down will effectively reduce the compression ratio and therefore reduce some of the intensity of the effect. In my opinion, the Carl Martin pedal imparts a certain tone and vibe that sounds really cool. This example is how most compact compressor pedals are designed to work. If you don't see a threshold level on your compressor, that means that it's fixed internally and it's less versatile, but there's still things that you can do to manipulate it. The key takeaway to realize here is that look at the controls that are on the compressor pedal you're looking at, and that will sort of dictate what it's designed to do. What's nice about the HX Stomp is that it comes loaded with full featured compressors and many different algorithms, so you can pick and choose and manipulate any compressor you want. You'll notice we're sort of increasing the intensity of how the compression 
is affecting our signal. So let's keep going. For single note playing, harmonics, and finger picking, and stuff that's generally giving a lower output from the instrument, a heavier compression can squeeze the signal to bring up the level of that softer stuff while keeping a balance and volume of the entire instrument. Let's grab the Helix Deluxe Comp and my old Dynacomp. Now the Dynacomp has a fixed threshold that's set pretty low, so it quickly compresses even a light guitar signal. Let's try to match that on the HX Stomp by bringing down the threshold. The attack and release times can also come down as we want the compressor to act fast and immediately grab a hold of those notes and give them that body. Quickly bypass and re-engage the effect and use the volume to match the bypass and effect level. Let's keep the mix on the HX Stomp up. The MXR doesn't have a mix control, so we're gonna be using a pretty strong linear compression in this case. The compressor here is really helping to project those softer notes up into the mix. And most importantly, it makes it a lot easier to play because those softer notes have a little more force coming into the amp. Again, like the last example, you'll find that this is a relatively easy sound to dial in on most compressor pedals, like your Boss CS3, your Keeley compressors. These are how these are set up. It seems to be the subtle compression and the hard limiting that's the more difficult thing to coax out of some of these stomp boxes. However, with the HX Stomp and its deep parameter set, you can really take any of the comps and turn them into one of these if you know how to manipulate the controls. Building on that last setting, let's boost the volume above Unity and also raise the compression to create like a boost and sustain kind of compression that's great for singing leads and slide guitar playing. We're gonna keep the threshold low, we're gonna keep the attack and release low, and we're gonna keep the compression ratio high so it's an extreme effect. Also increase the volume above Unity to boost the front end of your amp or pedals. <laughs> This kind of setting with the threshold down and the volume and the compression ratio up, it can tend to get a little noisy. You have to understand that what you're telling the compressor to do is raise the volume of anything that's coming in above the threshold level. So buzzing from pickups or buzzing from pedals will be picked up and amplified because that's what the compressor is doing. One last thing that I wanna to touch on, and this comes with a lot of debate and a lot of different opinions, is where to put the compressor in your chain. And I wanted to wait till I gave you all the examples to explain this. I personally like to put compressors early on in the chain. I want the dynamic leveling and the dynamic manipulation to be coming from my guitar, basically into the compressor, and then have that run into my amp and into my gain pedals so that I can manipulate it that way. I think that putting a compressor after your gain pedals works if you have it set to one of those limiter settings where it's really just capping the volume and sort of polishing your sound. That's a lot of what they do like in the studio with a compressor. If you use a real squished or like that real sustainy lead style compression after your gain, that's not necessarily a sound that I like Please feel free to experiment with that. It works for some people, but it does not work for me. So <laughs> that's how I feel about it. Just be aware that wherever you have the threshold set, the compressor is going to raise the level of anything under it. Meaning that if you put a compressor after a fuzz, even when that fuzz is not having any signal through it, there's a lot of noise that it makes and it's gonna amplify that. So people say, oh, my compressor is noisy. It's like your compressor is noisy depending on where you put it and what you're telling it to do by how you set the threshold level. And if your compressor has a fixed threshold level, you have to abide by that and you have to play with that or get a pedal that has an adjustable threshold level. 
Between the HX stomp and the analog pedals for compression, there are several key factors and things to consider. Analog pedals with their analog circuitry may have a little more character and a little more vibe where the digital compressors could tend to be a little more sterile. Then again, a lot of the analog pedals are gonna lack the versatility that you would get through a plug-in or through something like the HX Stomp where basically every compressor algorithm have all the controls that you would need. I would say think about what you wanna use the compressor for and if you can find a stomp box compressor that can do what you want, you may be better off doing that, having the benefit of the analog circuitry and some of the vibe. If you're not sure what you wanna use the compressor for and you wanna have a myriad of options that all have a lot of parameters, something like a multi-effect or an HX stomp would work better for you. I hope this video helped you understand what a compressor does to the signal, how to manipulate it with the controls, and also how something like the digital compressors in an HX stomp compare to the analog pedals and how that will affect your signal. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. It really helps the channel a lot and I would greatly appreciate it. Check out my page for other guitar related tutorials and I also have a couple other videos on the HX Stomp that you might enjoy. Thanks so much for checking it out. I hope to see you in another video and until then, take it easy.